what's up guys? Uh, it is Saturday, the day before Easter, and I am uh, MDing for Easter tomorrow, Easter Sunday. So I wanted to talk to you about kind of what goes into that. But hold on, wait just a second. Uh, okay, much better. Um, so, like I said, in this video, I'm going to talk about you know what it means, at least in my context, what I'm doing to be the uh, MD, or I guess band director is probably a more apt uh, term. Uh, I'm going to show you what our rehearsal looks like. I'm going to play the uh, talkback, um, you know, audio like my ear mix, what I'm saying to the band, how I'm you know trying to direct some of those moments, uh, and I'm going to give you a look at our Easter service and hopefully just show you, I guess, what a band director can do. Um, and how it can benefit um, a setting. Also, just really quick, um, I'm gonna jump into to the other stuff, but I wanna talk about some gear stuff because I'm really pumped about it. So if you wanna skip anything, I've got chapters in this video, so you can skip this section if you want to, but I wanna talk about some lenses for vlogging, um, capturing drum content. So if you're interested in getting into vlogging or you know content capture, talking head kind of stuff, announcements, that kind of thing, um, this may be beneficial to you. So uh, really short, um, this is the lens that I usually have been shooting on. This is the uh, Sigma uh, 16 millimeter f1.4, I think. It's 1.4, 1.6. And I can't remember, I think it's f1.4. Um, so this is made for crop sensor cameras. So the amazing thing about this is a price point. It's like 300 bucks, it's amazing. Also, I've got all these lenses I'm talking about, all the gear linked uh, in the description below. So everything that I use for video production is gonna be linked B&H below. And then all my music gear, Sweetwater links below, so you can literally access anything. It's all there if you have any questions about what I talked about. Um, so this is great um, because it's cheap comparatively. Um, I know 300 bucks is a lot of money, but $300, it's wide. Um, it doesn't zoom right, it's a prime lens, 16 millimeter. Really great low light, um, but it's for crop sensor cameras. So on a full frame, you know, it punches in. And, and you can, if you don't know what that means, ask me in the comments or someone can explain it better. But basically, this is not actually 16 millimeters. I can't remember what the conversion is. I think it's like 1.6 times zoomed in because when you put it on a full frame, it's got to punch in. So I've got a couple lenses. The one I'm using right now, which I'm falling in love with, but it's pricey, but it's probably the GOAT lens for Sony's is the, uh, for this kind of focal range, is the uh, uh, 16 to 35 G Master um, 2.8. So again, this thing zooms out to 16 millimeters, which is just crazy wide. I mean, I'm literally an arm's length from the camera right now and it looks wildly, ridiculously wide and then zooms in to 35. So what this means for me um, is that this is actually, even though this is 16, this is like the 16 on this camera, but this camera is gonna be more like, I don't have any markers, but it's probably like, I don't know, somewhere like in here. So for me, getting every, little bit of uh, width is perfect for shooting in drum cages because two things I do, vlog, talking head kind of stuff, and then shoot myself playing the drums. So I wanna get as wide as humanly possible without going into the whole fisheye thing, GoPros are great, but this is just so much more production quality. So the ultimate lens, the 16 to 35, this thing is a beast. Um, but another option, so again, this is the 16 that I use, this is the Sony. 20 millimeter f1.8 and this thing is also incredible because even though it's 20 and this is 16 this is actually wider um, and looks great really well built so um, i'm using the 16 to 35 right now but i'll probably jump over to this for the rest of this vlog for the run and gun stuff because i have an nd filter um, already that fits that fits both of these so i don't have an nd filter on this so as long as i'm shooting inside where the light is low it's no problem but if I go outside, it's gonna be blown out. And then finally, this is not a vlogging lens, but um, I also take a lot of photos. Uh, if I'm like on the drums, I wanna shoot out from the drum cage, kind of show you that perspective. So this is the Tamron 70 to 180 F2.8. Uh, and this thing is massive, as you can tell. So I'm excited about this. Um, so these are lenses, I got these three lenses, the 16 to 35, the 20, and the 70 to 180, which uh, you know I'm kind of trying to figure out what will be my perfect setup. So. Um, you're going to see those lenses in action throughout the rest of this video. Just wanted to show you, um, you know, for my people that are interested in that kind of stuff. Again, it's all linked below. So let's jump into this a little bit more. So band director, what does it mean to be a MD or a band director in this context? So what I'm talking about specifically is I am running the tracks. Okay, so that's like one thing. 
I am on a talkback mic, meaning this is a microphone that just goes to those people who uh, have in-ears on. So um, if you're not familiar with this at all, really, really quickly, um, you know, we have our musicians uh, on uh, headphones and they have a personal mixer. And so I've got a microphone that does not go out to the house speakers where the audience can hear it. It only goes and only is heard by those that have ears on. So for instance, I'm calling out cues. Now there are cues in the track, you know, that say verse, chorus, that kind of stuff. You'll hear that. But I may be calling dynamics. Um, if our worship leader gives a sign, I'll cue the track to follow that and I'll alert the band. Now one thing specifically about me that's unique, um, we also have our MD, uh, which is Nathan Bushnell at our church. He also has a talk back, so he's going to be giving cues like chord changes, if there's things like that, because I'm not going to give you know give cues on numbers or where we're going to go. That's the only thing that I'm not doing. I'm not going to say uh, play this chord or let's replace this chord with this chord. He's going to still speak into that, but as far as where we're going, the dynamics, hey, let's build it up here, or let's go ahead and drop down here, or hey, she said chorus, let's make it a big chorus, or hey, let's do this, let's do that. Um, and also trying to read what the worship leader is saying. Sometimes they're on in-ears, sometimes they're not. So sometimes I have to uh, get in, you know feedback from the worship leader and then tell the band what we're doing. So um, when we get there, I'll show you, but I've got a little switch. Drum cage is kind of hard because it's so loud. I've got a switch that basically turns that microphone on and off. So uh, it's a lot to do if you're MD, especially on drums, it's kind of hard to do. Um, but we're using Ableton Live, which is, in my opinion, the best um, playback engine uh, for a live context because you can jump around to any point of the song at any point. I've got other videos on that here kind of outdated at this point, but um, I may do a new one. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So right now I'm here at the studio uh, because I've been um, just running so much. All my gear is kind of all over the place. So I'm going to pack up my uh, gear to go there, make, like my GoPros, get my lenses, get my batteries, all stuff um, kind of in my Pelican case. So I'm ready to go. I'm going to go through the tracks. I think I'm, I've got to combine two tracks together where I can jump from one to the other. And then I just need to brush up on my material. So it is uh, 1025. We have rehearsal at the church at 2 p.m. Um, so I'm going to get there. Me and Nathan are going to meet at, at 1.30 to talk through the tracks, make sure. I think some things he wants in a different key, so I'm going to change some of those. So I'm going to get there probably like 12.30. So I'm going to pack my stuff. I'm going to review my material, uh, and then I'm going to head over to the church and um, work through stuff there, get settled in there, get my tripod, all my video stuff set up before we even begin rehearsal. That way hopefully I can capture rehearsal, show you guys that. Um, and then we'll be on to Easter. So if you got any questions about any of this kind of stuff, how it's set up, how it works, how do you set up a talk back, if you don't have that at all and you want to get there, um, again, hit me up in the comments below. I would uh, love to help you if I can. I may not be an expert on everything, but hopefully I can give you some help. So next, I'm going to get my gear together, get all that stuff packed, and then we're going to hop on my, I'm just going to use the electric kit to practice for today, and uh, we'll get over to the church. So good start so far. I'm feeling good. I got this not not sponsored. Uh, triple shot draft latte. So actually pretty good. If you got any energy drink recommendations or coffee drink recommendations, let me know in the comments. What are you enjoying? What are you drinking? Usually I'm either Red Bull, just a original Red Bull, or the yellow ones, like the yellow ones. Um, uh, these these different. I don't even know how to say it, but these different uh, variations on this drink, like the nitro cold brews and the double shot espresso. Starbucks. Um, that's my like morning go-to is the small double shot espresso. I think it's just espresso and cream or something. I can't remember which, which version. So anyways, okay, let's pack my stuff. All right, this is the slider that I use. This is the Edelkrone uh, slider. I use it just because it's small. It can be packed, it's portable. This is the um, head that I use on this, the Magnus Z3. Got my camera on there. I have this vlog cable from Merino Customs. So if you're using a uh, Behringer, like a P7 that has multiple outputs, you may not need it. But for me, like on Avioms, you plug this in and then you have headphones and then you also can go into a recorder. So I go from there into an iRig. Um, so that way I can capture and listen at the same time. I can't tell you how many of these small rig clamps I have. If you are recording music instruments live, these this is it. This thing can hold this A7C with a 16 to 35 large lens as long as you got the different things locked on so again i've got all this stuff linked in bnh stuff below but you can tell um, this is also a great one this goes directly onto a mic stand so you know not quite as much but i literally will put this camera on here as well i'm not saying i guarantee it's not going to fall but um, i've never had a problem with them so if you want something really really sleek instead of a tripod you just mount that on top of a mic stand and then put your camera on top of there 
And um, yeah, those do great. They're like 13, 15 bucks. So a lot of times for me, I have to kind of pack and repack so I understand what I have. Uh, I haven't upgraded all the way, but right now I'm shooting with the Hero 9 black and the Hero 8. Um, and then I have a Hero 5 that I haven't really been using, but I may. Also, this is, I'm gonna show you, I've showed it many times, but it's just a small rig clamp and this little Manfrotto phone clamp. I put this under my hi-hat so I can have my phone accessible right there if I need to review something, a chart, something like that. So I'm gonna undo my batteries, make sure I understand what I've got. I'm gonna leave this lens out because I'm gonna shoot on it. I'm gonna pack the 16 because I'm probably gonna use that. Pack this guy, massive lens. So I'm gonna use this for my overhead GoPro. Top, phone mount, Reels GoPro, or Reels camera pops. I've got my Sony A6600, which I'll say if you're getting into vlogging and stuff and you don't know what camera you wanna use, this is a great option. I think it's only like 1100 bucks, 1200 bucks, which is, it's a lot of money, but it's got 4K, looks great. It's an APS-C lens, but, uh, camera, but again, the lenses are cheaper. This is the 56 uh, millimeter, I think again, it's like 300 bucks. So, uh, A6600, this is still a great camera for me. I love it. I'm gonna switch out. I think they have a 58, SM58 on Talkback in the drum cage. I'm gonna use a 57. So I like the 57 for Talkback. Sorry, can you still wanna see me? I like the 57 for Talkback because it's a lot more directional. Easier to isolate. So I'm gonna take this um, and I'm gonna use the 57. I'm gonna replace that. You may not be able to hear the difference just in that audio, but as far as isolation for the rest of the band, it's gonna be helpful. Got my sticks and um, I messed up my 1964 case a long time ago, so I just bought this Pelican 10 tin case, put some foam in it, and stuck my ears in there. And then I love this mono case um, because it just unzips like this, and that way the stick just can hang out. So I can grab an extra stick if I need to. It doesn't zip all the way. It doesn't open up all the way. But for me, it's great because it's slim. It's small. carries enough sticks. I don't need a massive amount of sticks. Um, is my battery case, which has gotten kind of crazy. Um, so it's not as neat as it once was, but I've got Velcro everywhere. And so all my chargers are Velcroed, Velcroed. Um, but I've been traveling with it, so it's all messy. So I'm gonna get this plugged in, get all the batteries charged that I needed. This is an accessories case. I'm not sure what I got in here. If I need any of this stuff, this is a super cheap 85 millimeter. I don't think I need that. Uh, extra charging. I may use that. This is actually a better, no, that's a light. Uh, I love these. Hollyland Lark, I think it's 150. Charging case, two wireless transmitters, one receiver goes on your camera for lav mics. Okay, so, first got all my gear packed. We're gonna head over to the kit and get some rehearsal in, and it is 1040. Make it happen. That was here when I got here. Still haven't painted this room or done anything to it. Um, but I think I'm pretty much good. I'm gonna get my batteries charging and then work on material, and then we're gonna head to the church. All right, get some rehearsal in. If you're not following me on Instagram, do it, because I'm about to go live on Instagram. I'll show you a little bit of what I'm doing. But uh, yeah, this, this uh, kit, I love this rolling kit. I got a whole video coming out, or it's already out, depending on when you see this. Um, it's just awesome. I've got my laptop Bluetooth connected to the module and then through my headphones so I can control the sound from the uh, computer on a separate knob, the backing knob, and then my phones. So I can play just wirelessly. Super easy, great to set up, open the computer, connect Bluetooth, amazing practice tool. And obviously this is so much more than a practice tool. This has a digital snare with multiple um, just the sensitivity of being able to play that side stick, the ride, it's crazy. So if you're looking for like a kit to put in your church, electric kit, I got a whole separate video, but yeah, maybe check that out.
All right, done practicing. Um, feel good about it. Set up the sets. Everything's ready to go. I have got my, got everything packed up in my Pelican case, snare bag now. I'm trying to decide, I think, I think I want to do two snares. Uh, I think I want to take my old Supra for the main set uh, because it's kind of more, you know, just beefy, less need for a lot of articulate stuff, but we're doing the blood, which is like that, you know, doom, 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 doom. so I thought about maybe bringing this Tama snare. Um, it's a superstar, but I really like it. I don't know. I may just do the Ludwig and just see how that treats me for the entire set. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to bring the Ludwig because it's I can deaden it up if I need to, but um, I'm going to see how it sounds in the cage. I don't know. This, uh, this snare, and I wish I could tell you more about acoustics than I can, but... Sometimes it doesn't feel like it breathes as much in a cage, so it just kind of chokes it up. I don't know, it's kind of interesting. So I'm going to pack this guy up, take him, and then next is cymbals. So I have my 15-inch uh, Masters hats already in there. I think I'm going to still use the Dark Energy Ride as opposed to this uh, Signature Light Traditionals because I've got a 22-inch Masters Crash and then the... 20 inch big beat um, crash. So I think I'm good there. I think I'm good. I just need to decide what snare. And they have a snare there, which is not bad. Um, I just really like this super if I can get it to feel right in the cage. So yeah, it's, um, it's 1220. So I'm gonna get there, grab some food, hopefully get there a little bit before one where I can set up some of my stuff. And then, um, well no, I'll have time because I'm eating Nate at 1.30. So I'll have time to set up um, all my camera gear, maybe run through a couple things on the kit, and then me and him to walk through the orders and a couple of the sequence things, and then we'll get kicked off at two. So, here we go. Fam, I'm in the drum cage now, as you can see, um, and they are doing another rehearsal with Pastor Bachelor. You probably can't see him very well. So it's, um, it's five till two. So they're finishing that up, so I'm just getting my stuff ready, getting my station uh, ready with my in-ears, my tracks, talkback switch out. So now I'm just getting my GoPros. I'm gonna charge some of these batteries to get those ready. And um, then we'll be ready to go for rehearsal. And then we'll just go right into the blood. Do you want that in time? Like, do you want to keep that? Like, I think that so, like or that? do you think we should slow it down? No, I think that's fine. In yeah. time? Yeah. Uh, let's do four, I think. So. No, let's do one. And then we'll just rumble till we start the blood. One, two, three. One, two, three. Do you think we should rumble until we start that those hits? Do you think we should slow on that one until we do those? Yeah, that intro? we could. Just stay there. All right. Yeah. So that was. Yeah, I like that. I feel good about that. Okay. Um, Jason, do you have anything for us? Do you feel good through that whole first section? Do you want me to put in any? Um, I know sometimes like I can lose the one in that, like if the vocalist is kind of dragging. Do you feel good with that, or do you want me to put in some references, like the, maybe the build into the pre-chorus, like put in a four count coming into that or something? Say it again. Feel good. Okay. It's like in a wind tunnel. Um, okay, so what, what can I do to help with that, Nate, or prep for that? Do we need to build out a separate ending or just do a hard cut on the track on those hits? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, Wait, did we go through the whole song? No. So we're, that's it. That's all we're doing. We're not going to the. Oh, I'm I doing know. the live. Oh, know, we, yeah. We'll see if they're okay. I know, brother. Live, live, So we'll probably go back to. Let's just plan on going back to that bridge. So we'll do that whole like interlude into the bridge. Okay, so we'll go back to like the vamp before the bridge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So Unless there's a way to like go into, can we go into that bridge sooner? You mean just go straight into the first bridge? How would that work? So, um, this is the sound of drop bones rattling. Is that where it would come in right away? You mean if we go if back we, into it? Yeah, if we didn't do like a long interlude. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so. We go bridge one, bridge two, chorus, tag. Like, this is the ending, right? The tag, tag. Yeah, yeah. And then it does those vamps. And then what, you, what we don't want to do is, like, when we get to the refrain, right? Yeah. Which is the live, live. Yeah, so let's yeah. try. Okay. Let me let me cue this up. So let's let's do this. Uh, I'm going to pull the volume down just to. Okay, so let's do this. You want to listen to it from, like, the last chorus out and tell me where you want to go yeah. like when you want to deviate yeah okay tracks coming in hot i'm launch on the chorus fyi everybody here we go tracks hot All right, so tell me at what point would you want to keep playing this out? We'll do. Vamp, two, three, four. Is it possible to okay, go in right there? Okay, okay, like so, soon on the second so let's one. do this. All right, so tag. Make sure that lines up. So, let's see. So, tag. Vamp. Two, three, My four. My is able to say Does that work? I think this is right. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay, so then... Then talk me there to the end. So then we go bridge two, then we go chorus two, and then so say then the end could be just the this tag. Is the sound? Yeah. Uh, Open right? the grave. I'm coming out. So this is the chorus. Tag. So this would be the end right here, right? This would be end. Tag. Yeah. Yep. And let's do like a hard end. So right here. Just finished up rehearsal. Uh, we're done for the day. I moved my camera to the other side because, again, since I got the 16 millimeter, I've got much wider, a much wider shot, better options. So I think this is the shot that I'm going to do tomorrow. So I think it should be pretty cool. It's a little different. Let's see, I can actually push out a little more. Yeah, I think it's going to be cool. Again, it's a little different. I got my reels cam right there. You can just tell how wide this is. It's crazy. Um, so it's going to maybe be a little distorted, but I can probably do change that in post a little bit. De fish eye that. Um, I have a little bit of editing to do on the tracks. Some things, some orders that we're probably not going to stick with perfectly. So I'm going to go home and make those changes. Try to be back here. Probably, I think our call time is 7.30, so I'm going to try to get here by 6.30. So I have an hour to really lock stuff in. Um, and just prepare both on the kit and spiritually. So, um, yeah. I mean, rehearsal went well today. You know, um, we had, this is the only rehearsal we had, so some things, you know, are not going to be as locked in. Sorry, that's probably better. Some things are not going to be quite as locked in, um, you know, as they would be if we had multiple rehearsals, but, you know, that's okay. I mean, we're going to get it tomorrow, and it's going to feel good, so um, I'm just editing the tracks where I can hop to sections, different sections, if we desire to do that. 
if we do end up changing it, um, which we probably will not stick to the order perfectly. So yeah, I'm just preparing for that um, reality that we're probably gonna go off script a little bit, which is fine. I mean, we wanna do that, which with Ableton you can flow. For tomorrow, uh, I've got my 15 inch Masters hats, the PSTX um, splash stack, which I'm only using for one thing, 18 inch uh, Formula 602, uh, 21 inch Dark Energy, which man, I love this ride, and 22 inch Masters. So I actually like the 22 inch Masters thin and the 18 inch Formula 602 thin crash because they pair really well together especially in a cage setting. And then these 15 inch Masters hats, they're incredible. Um, anyways, I've got all this stuff linked in the description below. You can buy all this stuff on Sweetwater if you wanna check the symbols out. But you've heard these time and time again, they track so amazingly well. What I love about uh, Peisty stuff is just, the, I don't know, there's a way it tracks. Like it just comes through microphones in a cage, out of a cage. They're not harsh, they're not overbearing. They just mix and sit in the mix so incredibly well, in my humble opinion. So if you wanna check those out, I've got them linked. And then my uh, Superphonic is sounding great too. So, yeah, charging up the GoPros, um, leaving those to charge overnight. Take my laptop home, and we'll be good to go. So I'll probably just see you guys back here early in the morning. All right, last minute edition. I'm putting the A6600 right there with the uh, 16 mil on it, and as you can see, it's being supported by that small rig clamp. And I'm not really worried about it at all because they're literally that strong. So. That's going to get a pretty close shot, but yeah, I think it's going to look good. So that's going to be the shot you're more used to seeing. So I'll have this as my main shot. Maybe, I don't know. The only thing I don't like about having shots on the opposite side is you don't know how to make the stereo track. You make it go left to right, Tom's left to right or right to left. I think this is going to be my main shot though. So we'll see. So I got one, two, GoPro reels, GoPro overhead. So four angles. I know it's overkill, but it's Easter, right? So... We'll see. Good morning. It is 6.40, sorry, 6.50 now. Um, and back here, gonna work on a couple of things. I didn't have any of the uh, double shot espresso. So this is what I'm drinking this morning. I'm not really a fan. They're not great, but it's more of a necessary evil. Um, so a couple pivots. One, uh, we're doing a different, uh, Nathan wants to change the feel of House of Miracles a little bit to match the uh, Pentecostals of Alexandria live version that they did and so really just like me straightening out the drums so I'm gonna work on that a little bit the other tracks make sure we're good to go and the rest of the band will probably be rolling in I think 730 is the band call time but I'm just here to get a little pre-work not as early as I want it to be but um, still enough time so yeah we're gonna get to working um, I just thought about this. I want to show you a couple of Ableton hacks. If you uh, already use Ableton extensively, this is not going to be new to you. Not even hacks, just some thoughts, best practices maybe that you might pick up on and benefit from. So let me show you kind of my workflow. So um, this right here, we're going to repeat this section because they want to do like an interlude. So they want to make this like loop this bridge. So I just changed the marker name to repeat. That's just a reminder for me. And then over here, if I hit this key, Everything that's mappable turns orange, right? So I clicked on this marker and pushed the letter B for bridge. And then I renamed it B. That tells me this is what this marker, This don't forget that B is the marker for this. Um, the other thing is if I open terminal, uh, there's a shortcut key to open multiple versions of Ableton. If you don't like have tracks that you're gonna comp together, if they're just one after the other, but you want to go faster than having one session. If you type in open minus or open space minus in, and then go to applications and drag Ableton in there, it will start a second or third version of Ableton. So I have two um, Ableton live pages right here, as you can see. Um, I've got Ableton House of Miracles, and then I've also got Rattle pulled up. So two quick hacks. One is, um, you know, label your markers what the button is that you're going to press. So you can, if you're looking at a session, you can press. Don't forget that this button goes to this marker. And then also label the marker in a way that is beneficial to help you remember what you're supposed to be doing or if there's a cue for you if you're running tracks. And then secondly, that um, terminal shortcut to open two versions of Ableton if you need it. I use it all the time. So 
Um, what are your Ableton hacks? Do you have some Ableton best practices or hacks? Leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys do to help your Ableton workflow if you run tracks similar to this. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to get a few more minutes of rehearsal in, and I think the rest of the band is going to come rolling in. All right, I've got a little extra time, so I thought I would go through some things that I find especially useful. So these are just random things around the kit that I find extremely useful. So I've already talked about it, but I'm going to feature them one more time. The um, little small rig clamps here. These just have a clamp to this little attachment right here. So I'm using one on the uh, A6600. I'm using one from my Reels Cam. And I'm using a longer one here for my overhead shot. So they come in different sizes. Next thing is this Manfrotto phone clip. Um, I love this thing. You just and make sure that this clip is open and then you can just one-handed, this is my beautiful wife, uh, you can just attach it there. It's got a little spring here so it'll fit different size phones. I've got the iPhone 13 mini. So uh, the third thing um, is this Manfrotto tripod. So um, what I love about this is on the bottom of this camera is just a small dial, like a little thing, and it drops in here. You lock this. And then with this, I don't want to move it because I have it set up perfectly. This is a little roller wheel with a pistol grip, and you can just swivel it around super easily. So it's a great combination of, um, you know, portability. Like it breaks down like a, a travel tripod. Uh, it's sturdy though for its size. And then to me, the way it's not like a fluid pan tilt head, right? It's just literally a pistol grip. You undo that wheel, and it's complete 360 like that. Uh, you can move it every direction. So. For me, on the go, moving stuff around really quickly. I mean, if I'm in a really tight spot up against the back, I'll turn it around and I'll have the grip towards me under the camera. So that's the main tripod that I use for all of my stuff. Now, yeah, these are just some of my things that I find super useful. Um, you know, I talked about this already, this stick bag, but this is great because I just hang this on a Tom lug and I've got sticks right there ready to go. So this is that mono bag and then I've got my um, ears hanging there as well which I'll move them for the service maybe but sometimes I don't honestly uh, so I guess they're rattling around in there um, yeah we had a little extra time so I thought I would show you some of my random small not very expensive favorite stuff also meant to mention these guys tuner fish lug locks sure you're familiar with uh, what they do but lug locks basically just keep your tuning intact there's a lot of different kinds out there I just really like these and found that they work really well they come with like some uh rubber bands that go around here so you can actually rubber band them down but i find that you actually don't even need them if they're locked in well so yeah it's another quick little thing that is an accessory that helps me a lot um yeah here we go okay last accessory that i find is super helpful are these diy drum lights so they're literally these led viltrox led panels um just mounted up top run to a power unit so there's two of them um, and previously I've had them like on a little stomp switch where you can turn them off and on but they just have them powered in but they're great these things are like 30 bucks a piece and it's just a nice wash light it's, you can DMX it they're not able to be DMX just immediately you can put them into a dimmer pack or whatever but anyways these lights are like 30 bucks a piece you can change the color temperature and lights the kit up really well so yeah just another easy accessory inside the drum cage it makes a big difference all right, guys, um, just finished rehearsal and they're running through the skit. It's 9.30. I'm probably not going to have an opportunity to close this out. Uh, so I want to say thanks for hanging with me on this Easter. I'll show you some clips. I may come back post, uh, just voiceover or some text and stuff. But anyways, man, thank you all so much for hanging out on this Easter. Thanks for watching this video. Um, love for you for, to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and uh, turn your notifications on because usually I hang out in the comments when I post a video. So I'll be there talking about stuff. Um, but if you got any questions about what I use, again, all the gear I've got is linked here in the description below. Um, otherwise, uh, see you guys in the next video. Remember, we're starting. There is power, power, wonder, working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Dun, 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 dun. There is power. All right, here we go. Start swelling on the one. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. One. Two, one, two, three, four.
for House of yeah, Miracles? Yeah, go ahead. One, two, intro. All right, heading home. I've swapped over to the 20 millimeter Sony, um, and I'm just doing a handheld. I'm not using a tripod or anything. So, great service today. Um, a couple of additional notes, like things that I did in Ableton I didn't really talk about, but I'm glad I did. Um, one is usually uh, on any song, I will take either the click or loop. If there's a loop, I'll use a loop. If not, just the click. Put at the very end, after the song's over, put a marker there called loop or whatever, and then use a loop function in Ableton. That way, if I need to bail out or um, you know we're going off of off script per se where we don't have um, anything marked out for it then I can just hop to that loop that marker it'll just repeat till I'm ready and then um, you know when we come back into another section I'm ready for that so I did that um, and then just marked up one song um, a couple songs I think rattle was one that I just marked up a lot uh, because we talked about just doing different stuff and so we repeated a section or two um, same thing with House of Miracles I think was another one that I marked up a lot because I knew we were gonna hop around in the song so um, but yeah just just some Ableton thoughts um, add tons of markers label stuff where you can um, figure it out